you, Dr. Dan, <clears throat> Dr. Dheeraj Singh, the chair of the session, Professor Arvind Singhal, Professor Manisha Patek, Dr. Dang, Dr. Juhi Patek, I could see here, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey, all the distinguished participants. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and how thoughtful of the Global Communication and Education Conclave to organize a 75 day long media conclave to celebrate the 75 years of our independence, the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. I like your punchline that you used in your communication. 75 years, 75 days, 90 minutes, 75 Indian style words, of course, with an exception of me, 75 foreign style words, 75 government officials, 75 books and reports, 150 young researchers, all in one platform, just in one year, that is 2021 and 2022. And that is the year when the life is so disturbed for all of us because of the pandemic. I congratulate you, Dr. Dang uh, and your university, Khwaja Muhyiddin Chashti Language University. When I had last visited, it was Khwaja Muhyiddin Chashti Urdu, Persian, and Arabic University for taking this lead role in organizing this session, storytelling. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Manisha Patek on being conferred the Lifetime Honor Award for her inspiring contribution in your chosen field. I must admit in the very beginning that I am the most ignorant of all the panelists present here. The only reason that I am here with you in this session is because I visited the university a couple of times in the past and may have used a fable or two to convey my ideas and thoughts, which probably Dr. Dan liked. I know nothing about the art, science, techniques, and technology of storytelling, but I have been very fond of learning and sharing fables and stories to convey my thoughts, and have found it often more effective than long lectures. It prompts people to ask question and to connect immediately. What I know is that a fable or a brief story does a lot more and better than a long sermon. I am reminded here of a person, George H. Reeves. I'm very sure that Professor Arvind Singhal must be aware of him. He was director of the public instruction in the United States of America in early 40s. And he was trying to reform the school education but was faced with huge oppositions and challenges to the idea of the reforms. And then at that time he wrote a very brief story. And since then that story has been repeated in many different forms throughout the world in the form of cartoon, in the form of uh, short stories, the children's stories. And this story is called the animal school. Uh, not to be confused with the animal form. I'm not talking at all about that. And the story is something like this, that the animals decided that they need to do something heroic to survive the challenge in the new world. So they organized a school. They adopted an activity-based curriculum. And they thought that every animal in order to survive in the new world must know and must be skilled in running, climbing, swimming, and flying. And to make it easier to administer the curriculum, all the animals had to take all these subjects as a compulsory papers. The students were admitted, teachers were appointed, most talented students, most dedicated teachers. But 
the duck was excellent in swimming, in fact, better than his instructors. But he made only passing grades in flying and was very poor in running. Since he was slow in running, the teachers made her to practice more of running and also drop swimming in order to practice running. This was kept up until his webbed feet were badly worn and he was only average in swimming. But average was an acceptable grade in a school, so nobody worried about that except the duck. The rabbit started at the top of the class in running, but had a nervous breakdown because of so much backup work in swimming. The squirrel was excellent in climbing until he developed frustration in the flying, where his teachers made him start from the ground up instead of the treetop down. He also developed a Charlie horse from overexertion and then got a C in climbing and D in running, but that was also acceptable. The eagle was a problem child and was disciplined severely. In the climbing class, he beat all others to the top of the tree, but insisted on using his own way to get there, which the teachers did not like. The teacher has their own methodology and wanted that methodology to be followed. At the end of the academic session, it was an abnormal eel which could swim well, but could also run, climb, fly clumsily though, had the highest average and topped the batch in the class. And outside the school, the dogs were demonstrating. They were fighting the authorities. They were protesting. The digging and burrowing and the barking must also be included in the curricula. Otherwise, the curricula is unjust to the children, to their children. And then, frustrated by the public's response, they, they apprenticed their children to a badger and later joined the groundhog and gophers to start a successful private schools. This was a very brief story that he wrote and that changed the way that people think. And is still, when in India, we are talking about the new education policy and the curricular reforms and the multiple uh, pathways, uh, choice-based credit courses, there is no better way to tell this story. I am very sure that many people would be referring to our own Panchtantras, uh, so many stories that we grew up by listening to them, which had a message and they had a moral. In fact, in all traditions, in all languages, the storytelling has been so common that like we all grew up, I fortunately know Urdu as well. So Qissa Chahar Darvesh used to be a story which we all read and where one story led to another story and a very voluminous book. So it was not because of the lack of the uh, attention span but then it was still so absorbing that you could read the enormous voluminous work of the Kasta Jahar Darvesh. In Persian tradition, the Gulista and Bosta, which again had small fables, but big moral. We are all familiar with the stories of Alif Laila, the story of the Arabian Nights, 1001 Nights in Arabia, and of course, as I mentioned, in Panch Chantra. And it is not that the uh, tradition has discontinued, as the chair of the session was explaining, with the growth in technology, the communication, and the way we communicate to people and the storytelling is reforming and becoming, in fact, more impactful by being short, crisp, and making impact. Given the constraint of time, I would just say that sometimes the story enables us to communicate 
something which otherwise is very complex to explain to students and you needed to first draw their attention to attract their attention and then move on uh, further to the techniques and to the technologies. One such a story is about in economics is about the game theory, a very, very complex phenomena. Prior to game theory evolution, it was assumed that people are rational being and they behave all the time in the same way. But the game theory in fact told that no, the moment you take an action, the other party on whom this action is impacted also does something to react to that action and therefore he does not always necessarily does the same thing. And therefore this knowledge goes on passing. And Professor Kaushik Basu has been very fond of telling a story. We all grew up with the story of a cap seller who happened to pass by a jungle, happened to sleep under a tree to wake up to find that all the caps from his baskets are gone. But recalling a knowledge that monkeys are great copycats, so he threw his cap and then all the monkey copied him and threw their caps. And then he collected them all and went happily. Somebody extended this story. Two generations later, the grandson of the same story, the same cap seller, happened to be still selling caps, passed by the same jungle, slept under the same tree to wake up to find that all the caps from his baskets are gone. He recalled the knowledge which his grandfather had given. And then he threw his cap. But lo and behold, a big fat monkey comes down the tree, picks up even that cap, came to the cap seller, gave him a big slap and said that, do you think only you had a grandfather? Remember, I also had a grandfather who passed on the knowledge to me. Remember, a very, very brief story, but such an impact that it draws the attention of the people of action and reaction and the knowledge and the counter knowledge. And I think this tradition must continue and for teachers belonging to any discipline, I think uh, the storytelling becomes a necessary part of our life. And that is why today, and I'll conclude on this, that when sometime we teach online, the online has provided us many opportunity, but what we miss is that reaction that you see from your class when you are engaging them in a lecture, maybe through these stories, and their reactions keep on telling you that whether they are following you, whether they are getting bored, or whether they are interested in the topic, and that makes the teacher make quick amend to the style, to the method, to the techniques of teaching. Thank you very much, Tanu, for giving me the opportunity. I think I have stuck to my 15 minutes time. Thank you.